Ingen stress. Hey, it's really nice, man. Iwa 2023. My second Iwa and a lot has changed since the last time I was there. The last time was in 2019 and we all know what happened in between. And it was awesome to be back. For me personally, Iwa was totally different because I've grown with the channel, but also with the amount of people that I met during the past years. But it was difficult to have an idea on how many people saw what I was doing. And during Iwa or IWA, I noticed that people did notice what I was doing and that felt good. We, well, Lisa and me, had three days to see everything and talk to the people we wanted to see, which sounds like a lot of time. Well, then you never met me in person. And I also want to thank everyone for their time when I started talking about my projects. Besides that, I knew that I wanted to make a video about our RWA trip, but I wanted to make a different one. Yes, I can show you all the new stuff that I saw, but then I was basically looking at it and I wasn't filming. So instead of showing all the things that all the other creators will show you, I want to take a minute and tell you about some of the booths we visited that I think are interesting to show you. You might know some of them, but some of them you might not. So let's get in with the first one that is AimCam. And that is a special camera and I thought it was made in the UK, but what I found on their website was that it's made in the USA. Well, it doesn't really matter. It was awesome to see the passion of the person that made the product and he tries to make the best version of this product. It is a camera that is incorporated in your safety glasses and it captured the best POV possible and it also gives you the capability to stream to your phone and then live stream with it. So you can live stream on Twitch, on YouTube or whatever platform that you want to use. And I love the ID. But for me personally, it's a little bit too fixed where a GoPro is a lot more flexible. I can uh, take it off and take it in my hand and start filming stuff. But for target shooting or airsoft or real steel stuff, this product is very interesting. And I know actually a few airsofters that use this product. All the links of the brands or companies that I'm talking about will be in the description. So if you want to know more, just follow those links. Next up, Novridge. I don't think I have to explain this company. A lot of you, they know Novridge and I actually didn't check out the new products. I knew they were coming out with some new stuff, but I'm pretty sure you will have seen them already. Um, and some of them are in the video and I actually don't know if I filmed some of the new products. Me personally, I sat down with Novridge to talk about Airsoft the World and catch up after the SSP5 launch. And does anybody know if this sniper rifle that I'm showing right now is a different one or it's the same one in a different code? I have no idea. Oh, right, I wanted to see the new SSP2 and I started walking up to it, but I got distracted but so <laughs> by someone or something. So I didn't see it up close and, and yeah, doing so many things at once um, and, and I got distracted easily. Still, I took the time to shoot some video from the products and the boot itself. Red Wolf, and I think the biggest thing I learned on IWA was the logo doesn't say AWA, but RWA and that actually makes a lot of sense when you talk about Red Wolf. This was also the first booth where I saw some ICS rifles because ICS wasn't able to make it, uh, so it was fun to see some ICS rifles in other booths. Besides ICS rifles, they also had Crytek, Marui, Wolverine, and Lisa liked the very fancy painted rifles, which I must admit, they looked amazing. It was also the first time that I saw some of their online faces in real life. I wish I had some more time and actually I was only there to look at their products. So I don't want to take up too much of their time because they were doing a lot of other things. They had a very busy schedule and I'm pretty sure that we will have the time to meet up later in the future. But still we had the pleasure to have a brief moment with them and we also made it to one of their parties right before the end of the day. And there I had the pleasure to talk with the guy from Wolverine and I think that was one of the best conversations I had on IWA, mostly because it was not planned, it wasn't scheduled and he challenged me on why I use certain things in airsoft and this made me think if I made the right decisions about my gear and rifles. And if you want to know more about all my gear, yes there is a playlist on my YouTube channel. Vorsk, a company linked to Neuprol, which I learned on IWA, and they brought a very cool new gas MP9 style automatic submachine gun. It has some special features and it just looked nice. We didn't test it, but like if you picked it up, it just felt nice. They had some nice pistols too, but I'm more for practicality. And for me, it looked a bit the same, but in a different jacket, which might be awesome for others. But for me, it was a lot of 1911s and that's not my personal favorite. But Lisa liked the MP9 style thingy a lot. Next up, a stack. The company we all know, they make tracers, targets and FPS testers. Well, they had something innovative with them. It's a 40 millimeter grenade that you can fill up with their own speed loader. And it was just so satisfying. With a few simple movements, you can fill your grenade and it's ready to go. 
but I'm very curious on how the durability will be while you use this in the field. But I love the ID and besides the 40 millimeter, they also brought a Glock attachment that was some fancy technology. It is cool, but I don't think it's that useful. Bohemia or Bohemia, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a Czech airsoft shop. But the interesting thing about this one for me is that you remember that I told you that ICS wasn't at IWA. Well, Bohemia was there on behalf of them. They brought all the new toys that ICS has to offer and it was awesome to finally see them in real life instead of in a catalog or in a picture. It was a shame that they were locked into the crates so I couldn't touch them, feel or play with them. But still, it was awesome to see them. And then we have the yellow and black boot that was Rossi, an Italian company that I know because Lisa has one of their pistols and a plate carrier. But I didn't know that they made more than that. So it was very cool to see that they had different lines of rifles and also a sniper rifle. They have the Neptune line and the Sentinel line. And I also think they have an amazing looking pistol line, the Red Wing line, if you like that over the top style of a pistol. We got a nice tour through their boot and they answered all the questions I had. Their boot resembled the packaging they do, is this very nice and it's very clean. So it was a very clean, very well thought of boot and it was a pleasure to stroll through and take in all the information. Combat systems. I must say the dog led us up to this boot. It's also a Czech company and you can see a pattern here. Czech is very big in companies that do something with military airsoft or law enforcement. Combat Systems was a part of a bigger company called Combat Shield but they came fully independent in 2021. You can find a lot of their products used by the Czech police or special forces. It is impressive stuff but I got distracted by the doggo. Do something. Do something. Let's do a lightning round with some honorable mentions. We got GNG with their new ARP9 3.0. We have a spacey slide for your Glock. More M4 style rifles on the Evolution booth. A big boomstick which looks awesome but I don't see real use in Airsoft. Cases where you can sit on and store a lot of your gear. An all around red dot side in a small package. Popular Airsoft doing his thing and shooting videos. And me talking to Eva Europe about Airsoft World. Helicon. If there is one clothing brand that I love, it is Helicon Tex. They have the perfect price quality ratio for me. Their stuff is very durable and reasonably priced. And with the launch of more product lines a few years ago, there is something for everyone. I wear their pants, t-shirts, sweaters, jackets, and my favorite item, the black beanie. It was funny to see that they bring back the older camo patterns like Tiger Stripes or the Rhodesian camouflage. And I found my AK style chest rig that I made myself, well, Lisa made it, but for people that don't want to make it themselves. It's an old type 56 AK chest trick brought into the modern times. Me visited Helicons a couple of times, once to view the products and a second time to talk to the people when it was more a relaxed moment, so mostly at the end of the show. And they are also working on some interesting things that I can only support, but more about that in the later video. Wally X glasses. I didn't know how many times we visit their booth. During our road trip, we met the people behind the company and that was just amazing. They have a product that provides a level of safety in our airsoft community and their glasses are some of the best out there and they are also looking cool. If it's good for the military, it is certainly good enough for us and I'm looking forward to start testing some of their models over a longer period of time. But again, more about that in an upcoming video. And you would almost think that it's a good idea to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss all the upcoming videos. On Friday evening, Cybergun launched a new product and I just missed the launch. They were all clapping, but I didn't know really what it was. So I figured out it was the pistol in the middle of all the people. And if you don't know Cybergun, it's probably because a lot of the times Cybergun is working together with other companies to deliver the product. Their licenses are very interesting and you could see some of their products on their walls. For me personally, the FN Herstal corner was awesome to see. And I feel ashamed that I didn't make a video about that. I was all sucked into what was going on on the release and the new products and all the people around it. Shooter Global is one of the things that is special in this list. It's the only one in the list without the booth because I know the people behind Shooter Global. Those Ukrainian people developed the best timer out there. Yes, it's developed for real steel, but it works perfectly for airsoft too. They were kind enough to give us a demonstration in the Red Wolf shooting range and Dion had the chance to test it out with HPA, AEG and gas pistols. Some of the people working behind Shooter Global are also working on Airsoft World. You know, that little project that I'm working on. It was nice to see the timer in action, but it was even better to see the people again after a very long time. And on IWA, it's not only airsoft or outdoor, you have a lot of other things. And in the airsoft hall, there were a lot of knives. 
And we visited one booth with knives, and that was Willemsen, Willemsen, uh, Copenhagen. I hope I pronounced that correctly. It was a small booth between a lot of other knife companies, and we started talking. And I learned a lot about knives, and they were kind enough to answer all of my stupid questions I had. I learned about the different edges, the different uses of a knife, and why certain things are in there, or on there, or attached to them. And did you know that knives can have ball bearings? Well, then you can do this with it. This shows how smooth the knives opens and closes, and my personal favorite was the Wild One. Okay, that one doesn't close and open, but it was just an amazing looking knife. And it has an amazing feature, which I never heard of. You can take your steaming hot pot out of the fire with the small little knots on the top of the blade. And that's why I love to talk to people in IWA. You learn stuff like this, and you can see the enthusiasm in the people that stand behind their product. It's those meetings that are so special and that I love. And the last one in the list is ASG. And I kept this as last because I forgot to film the footage. But I wanted to say a few words, same as with Wiley X, we visit them on our road trip and meeting the people behind the company gives a whole different perception of the ID behind the product. And ASG is a company that we all know from the Evo or the Storm Grenades, but it's so much more. And this they showed on IWA. With them on the boot, they had the new Evo upgrade kit, the CZ pistols, the new storm grenades that I really need to get my hands on and test them, and of course, the show field. Every time I see one of them, it uh, reminds me that I just have to buy one for myself. That thing is just amazing, and I want one. And I also was wrong. I just remembered that the first ICS rifle that I saw was on ASG, because ICS and ASG are working together in some way. So thank you ASG people for giving us the coffee we needed and the talks I wanted. And this sums up the things that we saw and did on IWA. I know that I didn't show you everything, but it's way too much to show it all to you. Those are the things that stood out for me and where I took out my camera and made some footage. Let me know if you liked this style and if you did, I'll do it better next year because I learned a lot by filming this video. IWA is not only about the products, it's also about the people in the community, content creators and just enthusiasts like me that love the game. A lot of them went to a party after the fair, but we went back to our place, take a rest to be ready for the next day. One evening we sat down, had a few drinks, and with this, I want to end off the video. IWA 2023, you were amazing, and we will be back in 2024. Have a good day, and I'll see you next week for a new video. Bye.